In this problem, we're told a very strong but inept shot putter puts the shot straight up vertically with an initial velocity of 11 meters per second. How long does he have to get out of the way if the shot was released at a height of 2.2 meters and he is 1.8 meters tall? So that's going to be the problem. And what we wanted to always do first is draw what's going on. So we have the shot putter, right? They're 1.8 meters tall, but they're going to be releasing the ball or throwing it from above their head, right? Basically 0.4 meters above their head because it's at 2.2 meters, right? They throw it with an initial speed of 11 meters per second. Right, it's going to go up, go down, and what we're trying to do is find how long it's going to take the ball to travel from here, right, which is 2.2 meters above his head, or not too above his head, but 2.2 meters above the ground, 0.4 meters above his head, and then go all the way up and then back down and make sure we're trying to find how long it does that, right? So what we want to do next is write down the given. So this is going to be basically the hard part of the problem. So what information are we given? So the first thing we're given is the initial velocity, which is 11 meters per second. And when you do problems like this, you always want to make sure you label uh, directions, right? So if something's down, it's negative. If something's up, it's positive. That's the general rule. So since its velocity is going up, we say it's positive 11 meters per second. So another thing that we're not told, right, but we're assuming that this is on Earth, which means the acceleration due to gravity, right, in a free uh, fall problem like this, acceleration is just 9.8 meters per second squared. And it's actually going to be negative. And the reason that is is because it's uh, going downwards, right? Acceleration pulls it down. It's accelerating down as a result of gravity. So basically, it's downwards, right? Because when you throw something up, it comes down. That's this acceleration doing that. So that's going to be the acceleration. And then there's one other thing we know. We know the change in y. So uh, the change in y is going to, it starts here, right, which is 2.2 meters. And it finishes at 1.8 meters. So what is its change in height? It goes from 2.2 to uh, 1.8, meaning it's going to change 0.4 right? Because 2.2 minus 1.8 is 0.4, right? But keep in mind, it's going down 0.4, so it's negative, right? So it's negative 0.4 meters. So basically, these are the three kinematic variables we have for this interval, and we can just solve for the time, right? So we just need to find uh, the time it's going to take it for these variables, right? So uh, if you look at our equations and which one we want to use, uh, notice, uh, I think the one we should use is three because it's delta, right? So it's delta x, but in this case, it's just delta y, doesn't make a difference times t plus one half a t squared, right? Because notice we have v, we have a, and we have delta y, meaning all we have to do is plug in and we can solve for t. So let's just go ahead and do that. So delta y is minus 0.4, which equals v sub zero, which is 11, times t plus one half times a, which is minus 9.8 times t squared. So just move this out a bit, 11 t, and then one half times uh, minus 9.8 is minus 4.9 t squared. And then I'm going to move this to the other side. And what you should notice is we get 4.9t squared minus 11t minus 0.4 equals 0. And so this is in quadratic form, meaning what you can do is solve for t, right, which is what we want to do. We're trying to find time. And you can use the quadratic uh, formula. So I'm actually not going to use the quadratic formula, but you can if you'd like. Uh, I think the easier way to do this is just by plugging it into your graphing calculator. So you just want to take this function, 4.9x uh, squared, or t squared, minus 11t and then minus uh, 0.4. So basically all you want to do is just graph this. And when you do, you're going to get, uh, right, you're going to get something, uh, you're going to get a graph. And what you do in the quadratic equation is basically you find where it crosses the x-axis. And so when you do this, you get two values, one on the positive side and one on the negative. And so essentially, time can't be negative, meaning your answer is only going to be the positive one. So if you use the quadratic equation, it's just the positive value. But if you graph it, it's basically where it crosses through the x uh, on the positive side. So you just want to use basically the zero function or whatever, and then find where it crosses through. And when you do that, you're going to get that it equals, or t is going to be equal to uh, 2.28 seconds or about that. So 2.28 seconds, that's going to be uh, right how long it's going to take. He has to get out of the way, essentially. But yeah, so 2.28 seconds, that's going to be your answer. And hopefully you found this useful.